Well, the imam behind the proposed New York City mosque is now speaking out. Faisal Abdul Raoul uh, is is blaming politics, essentially, for this controversy. He believes the fierce opposition to the Muslim Center is closely linked to the upcoming November elections. Now, many lawmakers, including President Obama himself, have weighed in on this debate that is raging near Ground Zero. New York Republican Peter King is the ranking member of the House Homeland Security Committee, and he joins me now. Congressman King, welcome. Good to have you here this morning. Morning. What do you make of this Thank comment? You, because so far, uh, so far, he has been the Imam has been fairly quiet uh, on this whole thing during the most vociferous debate on all of it. Now he says he's still traveling overseas. By the way, on a trip that is partially funded by the U.S. State Department, he says it's all political. And Martha, I find that comment very arrogant and insensitive. First of all, the opposition to this plan to this. Uh, World Trade Center Mosque, developed from the 9-11 families. These were people who lost their loved ones on September 11, 2001. They're the ones who started it. This was clearly a grassroots movement. And obviously a number of political people have gotten involved. But that's what's called democracy. They're reflecting what they believe the wills of their constituents are. So for him, for this imam to stand back and say it's all politics, it again shows that he doesn't realize just how offensive he has been by attempting to put this mosque in the, again, in the shadow of Ground Zero and how insensitive he is to the families who lost loved ones that day. Yeah, some of the comments that he's made on this overseas trip, uh, you know, seem to be made with the intention of showing that he is very moderate. He's talking about, uh, he says radicalism is a threat to everyone, to all of us. He says we have to combat radical values wherever we see them. And he says that there's an extremism in all religions. Again, though, I, I think there's a certain moral equivalency that comes from this imam, because, again, he uh, often talks about what's radical, but doesn't necessarily tie it to Islam, or to me, to the extent that he should. And that goes back to his uh, comments on 60 Minutes after uh, September 11th, when he said that the U.S. was an accessory mm -hmm. to uh, the 9-11 uh, attacks, when he said that bin Laden was created by the United States, when, as recently as several months ago, he refused to say whether or not Hamas was a terrorist organization. So to me, uh, he is an imam who tries to have it both ways. And he, to me, he's giving uh, conflicting messages. And he's done that uh, continually. Yeah, I, I think that uh, a lot of people share that view with you. Talk to me a little bit about this developer, because I know that one of the things that you've been pursuing is where's the money going to come from for all of this. Now we're learning that Sharif Al-Gamal, uh, who is the young developer of this property, who bought half of it, uh, Con Ed owns the lease, he owes $224,000 on that property in, in back taxes. Uh, do you see this, uh, you know, A, as egregious, and B, as a loophole to, to end this project? You know, if those reports are true, and we're talking about almost a quarter million dollars in back taxes on this property, then clearly it raises the most serious questions is, how is he going to raise $100 million for this project? I mean, he's a person who was a waiter seven or eight years ago. Uh, then two years ago, he pays $4.5 million in cash for the property. Now he's going to raise another $100 million, and he can't even pay his property taxes on the property he has now. Now, yeah, this could give an, an escape valve. Because uh, first of all, he leases part of the property from Con Edison. And apparently he's not paying that, uh, you know, those taxes either. And to me, that could be grounds for Con Edison, if they want to, to take away the option to purchase their property that, you know, that he has. But there's also just the, the whole question of where is this money going to come from? How is he going to get it? And the fact that they refuse to say where it's going to come from, then it turns out they can't even pay their own taxes. It just to me, it's another, another serious cloud of uncertainty over this entire uh, World Trade Center mosque issue. Yeah, it, it does uh, raise a lot of questions and possibly a loophole for those who want to see this not happen, uh, that maybe they're going to, they may get somewhere with this. It's, a, it's always good to point out, I think, that the reason this building is available is because it was damaged uh, on September 11th, and, and that gives you right. uh, a real sense of just how close it is. Peter King, Congressman, always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you so much. Martha, thank